盛顿国民队新球场，位于华盛顿特区阿纳科斯提亚河畔，全工程四至六亿一千一百万美元。球场里空间广大，附有四万一千个观众席。球场里面拥有一个全美最大的积分板，西边窗外可看到美国国会。Now, typically on a job site like this, the big superintendent meets with all the subs every week, maybe week and a half, to discuss problems. But on this job site, because it's so intense, the deadlines are so short, Ronnie meets with all his subs each and every day. Yeah. All right, why don't we get started here? Yesterday, I was talking about the road closure here. Building a stadium before the design is complete is a lot like laying down railroad tracks with the train directly behind you. To avoid getting run over, it is critical that the sequence of construction be perfect. No one task ever impeding other jobs. Foundations, MSC wall. As they dig them out, we're cutting them off. Okay. But that's made even harder by their dense urban location. Nestled up against the Anacostia River and butting right up against the neighborhood, space is at a premium, especially on the field slash staging area. I mean, you have to quit in here because there's no room. But pretty soon, you gotta start digging down to make a field here, so they have to get out of here. You know, we clear a spot out, and people are like vultures trying to put equipment in there. We just, no, you can't do it. Ronnie must direct traffic so men and materials arrive exactly as they're. What that means is that the builders started constructing that part of the ballpark, and at the same time, architects were still in the process of designing that side of the ballpark. From the field, I can see the plan in action. Down the first baseline, workers are adding some finishing touches. Then, play ball. But as you make your way around, fewer and fewer seats. With over 30,000 seats still to BC to see firsthand how designers stay one step ahead of builders on the Nationals' new ballpark. On a typical project, the architect designs the building in advance, then hands the contractor construction documents which they build with. On this project, since it's design build, they're literally designing it as they're building it. So much so that the architect has their office located right on site. So is construction actually kind of racing to catch design, or is design kind of racing to get out of the way of construction? It's a little bit of both. HOK Sports is one of the premier stadium design firms, and they typically start designing about two years before groundbreaking. But here, they had to shave an entire year off of the schedule. So, so the builders were building the first part of the ballpark while you were still designing other parts of it. When they broke ground and started the、uh, main superstructure of the project, we were still in what we call schematic designs. Schematic design is, er is the early stage of the project. Correct. And they were digging holes in the ground and hanging steel. Yep. So it's really design kind of on the fly as you go. You're making. It really is design build. Sometimes we call it build design. <laughs> Eight architects work on site to keep pace with the builders. But as I look around the stadium, I'm not seeing any shortcuts or compromises. Since arriving in D.C., I have been amazed how the 45 different trades are doing the impossible: designing and building a stadium in less than three years' time. But I'm still missing a key piece of this whole design-build equation. I mean, Ronnie, that's, I, I look at this and I see a stadium being built. I see that's more built. I see that's less built. There is a logical progression and sequence and order to the work. Okay, I think I finally see Ronnie's master plan. When you started right there in Area One,、mm -hmm. was that part of the building design? No, no, no. We were on the construction on Area One. They're still figuring out the layout of Area Two. So the architect hadn't even gotten to say the suites when you were laying concrete over here. No way. Yeah. No way. Yeah. All right. So typically, architects hand over the design, then construction begins. But with their tight schedule, that was impossible. 
Instead, they divided the stadium into ten slices, like a pizza pie, designing and then building the first slice, then moving to the next slice all the way around, allowing construction to begin before the design was completed. So the checks and balances between construction and architecture is happening simultaneously in real time. Uh, right, working as a design build uh, effort, you're putting the architect and the contractor in the same you know trailer basically. They have the same goal, get it done. I mean, fundamentally, you're changing the way architecture and construction it, it has worked together. Like, you know, up to this point. Up yeah. to this point. Right? This is a whole new way of thinking about construction. When I come to job sites, I expect to see the genius of the architects and the workers. But now I realize there's also genius in the manager who brings the two sides, builders and designers, together to play as one team. Thank you. 